I suspect somebody with razor blades typed in their, taped in their fingers just may have just gently brushed us or something like that. And, you know, if it had hit skin, we would have known about it. They, you know, pushed us. They said horrible, vulgar things to us, um, things that I would never think to say to anybody, especially um, in, that, in that circumstance or even at all. When I saw my limo being damaged and was put on flame, I felt like, you know, I was having a really bad feeling about that. My kids were very affected. There are so many different ways to, you know, have your voice be heard, but the violence is not one of them. Joining me now is Emily Woodyard, whose fur coat was slashed, and we also have Muhammad Ashraf, whose limo was lit on fire by rioters at the inauguration. Let's start with you, Emily, first. Do acts of violence ever help any rioter or any protester's cause? No. The moment you take violence into an equation, you've lost the ability to speak. Differences are where we learn from each other. And this is just, it takes out the ability to talk to each other. Nobody trusts, you don't want to be nearer, you don't want to listen because you don't know when they're going to attack. That's a good point. And uh, Mohammed, uh, you know, we had uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. He was, uh, pro there were riots at his uh, talk last night. He's a conservative uh, speaker. He says that the left, it's the left that's against free speech. I'd like you to take a listen and, uh, and, and give us your reaction after this. Let's listen. My whole thing is, you know, uh, the left is, is, is profoundly antithetical to free speech these days, does not want to hear alternative points of view, and will do anything to shut them down. My point is being proven for me over and over and over again. So, Mohammed, is free speech only free if it's a liberal left-wing point of view? What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, everybody has to look at it like, you know, you can have all your point of views be heard by so many different ways but the violence isn't one of them. And it affects people's life, it affects people's mindset. And my driver, uh, Luis, he's still been shaken by what happened to him on that day. Yeah, and yeah go ahead, Mohammed, go ahead. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's still affecting us. It's been over two weeks. We don't know where our limo is. You know, it's, uh, we are facing challenging one after another. And then had Lewis been able to work that day easily without any uh, disruption, you know, everything would have gone yeah. according to plans. And yeah. now we are waiting for insurance to tell us if they're going to cover it. It's been two weeks. And then I, I don't know what protesters were able to accomplish from that. You know, yeah. nationwide chauffeur services have been serving this okay. city for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. And we never had had this kind of experience. Yeah, it's your small business is ruined by it. Emily, can you give us your thoughts on what Milo just said? It hurts me. I mean, we should all have the right to be proud. We should all have the right to be able to say what we believe and not worry about attacks. And it is permeating through society that if you don't have the Hollywood belief, then you're wrong. And I experienced it after I was briefly on a week and a half ago that they, I've, people have come back and have said things that they assume that I believe that I don't. And that's not right. You, yeah. you have to have a right to have your own belief. Emily and Muhammad, and go, I, yeah, go ahead, quick, quickly, go ahead, Emily. Well, I, I just want to say, I lost the ability for a coat for two weeks, okay. or for a few weeks. Mr. Muhammad has lost his income. He's lost his livelihood and the safety for his children. That's a good point. That cannot be acceptable. It's unacceptable. It's an important point. Emily Muhammad, thank you so much. Please come back soon. We want to hear an update on your stories. Thanks again.